Hi, this is Edward Smith, video game correspondent with IB Times UK. As part of Game Studio Spotlight, I'm here this week in Cambridge to speak with RuneScape creator Jagex about their work and their opinions on the British game industry. Jagex founded by uh, some indie gamers, uh, just a handful of guys who wanted to do some leading edge stuff in a browser, which wasn't done at the time. Uh, picked Java as the original language. Uh, shortly after RuneScape Beta was launched in 99, I think it was. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. It's really hard to kind of describe RuneScape to somebody in kind of you know, just one genre or kind of just one thing because the game is so big, it's got so many different dimensions to it. It's got humor to it, there's adventure, there's you know, PvP, there's social, there's chatting. It's, it's got lots of dimensions and I think it's interesting. Every time I, I speak to people, they, they play it almost for different reasons and they play it in a different way and I think that's probably what makes it unique. Um, and a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's the world's biggest adventure. I think it's a, it's a, it's a social network. It's something that is so broad and multivariate. And it wasn't that we tried to create all things to all men, because you, you end up with something that's vanilla. It was more that given its, uh, its lineage and its evolution, we've created so much. It's a, you know, it's a place you go to, not just play, but you go to hang out with your friends because they're doing the same thing. I think there's so many advantages for being a developer and publisher. Um, and you know, kind of it means we've really built a, a great relationship with, with the community. You know, kind of we build the games for them and then we kind of help deliver and kind of provide that service on a continuous basis. Um, I think the, the big difference from games that just ship and it's the end of it is once we launch, it's the start of the process. So we need to engage with our audience on a daily basis. We need to give them new, innovative, fun content on a weekly basis. And it means we need to have a team that's working around the clock. And given the competitive nature of the industry, we need to raise standards and the bar all the time. So it's a it's a very fun, dynamic and challenging environment, but um, one that hopefully you know, we, we're getting better and better at all the time. And the publishing element of that is, is again, giving us areas of expertise that forms a really holistic you know, uh, effort for us in terms of the player experience. But we think kind of the games industry is you know, kind of a good example of why you know, people uh, should take maths, should take sciences at school. Um, we think uh, we're working with the government on, on a program to try and kind of create greater awareness of it. Um, being part of the game industry is not just cool, it's also fun, can be rewarding um, if you get it right. Um, so, so we think we can help in hopefully creating awareness. Um, you know, we, we fundamentally are a modern day exporter. Kind of 65% of our player base is, is, is external, or sorry, 75%. Um, and you know, I think we, it's, a, it's a great source of modern day manufacturing. It's, it's, it's IP we create, it's, and we export it to other countries. And, and getting people a, into the industry and realizing the career opportunities is very important for us. It, yeah. uh, it's, it's, I mean, that's one of our big challenges, kind of, you know, we're always looking for great people. And, and as you say, it's a range. It's, it's a range from, you know, people that kind of run service elements to great expertise on design, kind of uh, mobile user interface, etc. So it's a range of, of skills we're always looking for programming specifically. Um, we've got a great recruitment team. They're doing great things, they're always out there, but we're finding a challenge in the UK. And I think, especially when it's looking at um, some of the programming skills, you know, we, we have to look offshore as well. Um, some of the very innovative kind of um, mobile technologies, it's not always kind of that we can find the skills in the UK. So it's a, I think it's one of our big challenges is how do we recruit and retain great people? Yeah, there's a, so I think there's a lot of people looking for that uh, 
IQ and talent. Uh, and uh, there's just less of it now, I think, also than there was a number of years ago. So it is tough. But also, I mean, as a result of that, we do bring a lot of graduates in. Uh, for us, the real uh, re recruitment or selection criteria is IQ, so smart people, uh, and then cultural fit. You know, I think people with great work ad uh, ethic, attitude, you can teach them the rest. And that's a bigger investment, it takes more time, but we've also found of those that we've inducted that way, you know, almost all of them are still here with us today. So it does pay long-term dividends too. Uh, to be more considered about that and be patient about developing your talent within the organization. And, and we've seen uh, some great success stories like that around the world. Obviously, we're hoping to create uh, another one here ourselves. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think uh, we don't, I don't think we get recognized as a, as a, we don't get seriously recognized as an industry per se. Um, I think it's kind of guys playing around, making games, can't be serious. Um, and then I think even within the industry, yeah, as you were saying, Ryan, I think we've been a bit of a secret. Um, but that's okay. I think that's, uh, these things go full circle. And it does seem that the, 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 the industry has changed shape. Now it's creating an environment where companies can be successful. And some success will breed more success. And you know, I think that comes down to the skills as much as it comes down to the fair environment, the ability to easily bring in talent to produce the content, etc., etc. You know, I think it's creating that whole environment to, to enable success. And I don't think necessarily that's been that easy. I think it's actually been quite hard uh, currently to be a successful company in the UK. It's, it's sad for us to be the largest UK games of open publisher. It's wonderful on one level, um, but I would, would have loved five or ten even bigger, more successful companies ahead of us for us to aspire to, uh, to beat. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I don't why exactly why the UK games industry is like that. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, be it lack of investment, lack of innovation, or uh, perhaps a stranglehold the publishers, traditional publishers, have had over the development space. Um, the long cycles between the new console hardware, so lack of investment there, but or just some, quite simply the you know the tax advantages or. Uh, things put forward by other country, companies, countries, uh, which has seen a lot of the talent leave uh, and been dilutive to the industry. But yeah, I think it's in a very sad, sad, sad shape. And I think, um, you know, we've seen some big names uh, uh, collapse not so uh, long ago. And I think if I had to look into crystal ball, I'd say there's a few more to come. So that, that's pretty sad. Uh, if you think games started in the UK, this was the birthplace of them. Uh, we would like, hate to be the last guys to turn off the lights. Um, and we're working very, very hard. Which we're not going to do. Which we're not going to do. <laughs> um, so we're working very hard beyond just our own business. And you know, as Rian touched on with the government and other things to try and promote uh, you know, kind of the next generation of games developers, the skills. Um, you know, we, we were uh, the forefront of lobbying on the tax breaks for the industry just to kind of create parity with other countries like France and things like that, just to make it a fairer place to compete. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, as a business, we're working very, very hard using whatever capital we have, uh, uh, political or otherwise, to uh, make a difference and to make the UK a great place again to make games. Um, but uh, I, yeah, but I'm worried that, you know, as, as one company alone, that might not be enough. Join us next week for the final episode of Game Studio Spotlight, when we'll meet Little Big Planet creator Media Molecule to discuss the future of the British game industry.